Hello, uh, little impromptu video tonight. Um, felt compelled to make this uh, brief. It's going to be a short video, most likely. Um, as you know, some of you know, I put out a series of videos per the request of one of my viewers to give my opinion on praying to the saints for intercession and praying to uh, praying to rosary. My opinion as a non-denominational person who enjoys the Catholic Church and for what it is, but I myself am not Catholic. Uh, not yet anyway. I don't know. We'll see. Well, it should have occurred to me that a topic like that is bound to rub some people the wrong way. Um, you know, I, I don't take back anything I said on those videos. I went into it prayerfully with some study, and, uh, you know, I... Oops. Yeah. He doesn't like to stand up. This actually, I got it. break. <laughs> this is Calypso. My brother sent this to me. This was a favorite childhood toy of mine uh, when I was like, you know, 10, 11 years old, 9, 10, 11. This is Calypso. This is an antique toy of a doll. My brother sent it to me. Lives up in New Hampshire. Uh, Calypso can sit that one out. I still play with dolls. Yes. <laughs> got a child's heart. But with a heavy heart, I've got to say, I'm not sure I should have posted those videos. Because the last thing on earth I want to do with this channel is make anybody feel bad or upset. Um, you know, there are some people that are just not very tolerant of other people's views or their practices of Christianity. And... I'm pretty tolerant when it comes to, I mean, I, I love the Catholic Church. I'm not Catholic. I go to Mass, I think I'd rather sit in on a Mass than, but I currently go to a Baptist Church, and I've been Assemblies of God. I've, a lot of Assemblies of God, which is a charismatic church in America. Um, been often on Catholic Mass. I've uh, been to, uh, where I can't take communion, but I understand their reasons for that. You know, I, I accept that. So I go to the Baptist Church and take communion. I go to the Episcopalian Church, St. Matthew's, or the Anglican Church. I go to that occasionally, where I take communion uh, there. I'm not hung up on uh, denominations at all. And I've always viewed, I think correctly, the way they venerate the saints is not the same as worship, bowing down and worshiping See, a lot of Protestants get hung up on things. I know some Protestants. I'm not putting on Protestants because I'm a Protestant. I was born or uh, raised a, uh, in a... My, we went to a Methodist church when I grew up, and I was baptized Methodist. But my mother liked the Catholic church a lot, too, quite a lot. And like myself, her and I both are open-minded, you know, very open-minded Protestants, but not open-minded to the point where we... Um, would accept sin. I mean, there are some things going on in churches today that just shouldn't be happening. Uh, they clearly go against the Bible. But this thing with uh, the saints and such are not those things. But then again, that's my opinion, and there are people out there that strongly feel that they don't like the images of the saints and the stained glass windows and the medallions, and that's a, that goes back... Uh, Catholics have been persecuted in this country. The Irish Catholics were not welcome, not because of their race, obviously, but because of their Catholicism, which the people in America saw as old world, and a new country, a new America, didn't want any part of that. And the Italians that came over, a lot of them were frowned on because they were Catholic. And uh, it wasn't a race thing, it was a, a Catholic thing. And... America broke away from that, they thought, and uh, some of that mode of mind still lingers. And it, uh, when I was in France this year uh, at Mont Saint Michel and other places, the Huguenots were massacred 
by the French, by the Catholic Church, uh, persecuted the uh, breakaway Huguenots. You know, and it was really sad to think, what a beautiful place. But it's got that bloody stain, you know, and in that time, like in the 1700s and around the time of the uh, French Revolution in the 1790s, um, and the Napoleon himself really looked down on religion, period. And he turned, uh, they turned like Mont Saint Michel, they made it into a prison for a while. And so, intolerance within the Christian church, Catholic and Protestant, has been a problem for a long time. I don't need to give you the history of that. You know, I could talk about other countries. But I just wanted to talk about, answer some of these questions. My own views, which could get me in hot water. Uh, and I don't want them to. And, uh, you know, I don't want them to. I, I gave my views on praying to the saints for intercession, and what I think of it, and why I don't have a problem with it at all. And I do not think it's the same as bowing down and worshiping graven images. But some people do. And I've talked to those people, and they just won't. They don't. I've not. I've yet to convince a single Protestant that that's not what Catholics do. And uh, so I'm sorry. I I've tried. Like I said, I've defended the Catholic Church a lot throughout my life. To hard-headed Protestants, I I know somebody right now, a Protestant, a friend of mine. Uh, they think the Vatican's full of all kinds of evil things. And I, where are you getting this from? You get it off the internet. Conspiracy theories. You know, there have been a problem with priests and pedophiles. That is a very isolated, tragic, you know, that's tarnished the image. That's the devil's work. Because the Catholic Church is the very first church of Christ. And Protestants don't really, a lot of them don't, they need to study, uh, I think. And that's what I'm trying to give a brief education on things where they get to venerate the saints and Mother Mary and, you know, things like um, how, how uh, people become saints. My videos covered that. And uh, I completely agree with it, though I do not personally pray to saints. I have prayed to um, Mary at times for intercession. I've said Hail Marys, uh, played with the rosary some, which I think I would like to get to do that better. I don't have a problem with that. I think, personally, I hope I didn't turn anybody on either side of the fence off with anything I said here. May you forgive me if I did, and may God forgive me too. I went into this very prayerfully, but I didn't really stop and consider that it's kind of a hot topic. People get so set up in their religious beliefs. I mean, like I know a lot of Catholics, that, that, that's a... Here's the thing I like about the Catholic Church, where it definitely is over the Protestant churches, all of them that I've been to, and I've been to a lot of them. Catholic Church is very family, family centric, very family centric in many ways. It's all about the family, just like Jesus Christ was, all about the family. The family here on earth and our heavenly family. And so is the Catholic Church. And honestly, I, I think uh, a lot of Protestants need to do more study to re-educate themselves about things that they were taught were awful because somebody told them that the Catholics uh, bow down to graven images with the saints and with Mary, and some people don't. they got a problem with a figure on the cross, a crucifix, I guess. I don't have a problem with that at all. In fact, I kind of preferred the whole thing about the cross is to remind us that Jesus hung on it for us. So if they want to put a figure on there, I don't have a problem with that. It's supposed to be a remembrance thing. And, and all the images of the saints are just pictures of our family in heaven. They're not gods. They're not, the Catholic Church isn't raising these people up to be little gods in heaven. They're not. They're just venerated people that were born of the earth and died of the earth and are buried here somewhere and had all the problems you and I have, men and women both, a lot of saints are women, 
but God used them, he used them to do his work in, in this world. And they were committed to do God's work. And he worked through them. So that's how saints were. And they're verified when they're a saint. We, that's the Catholic Church's way. I covered this in my videos of going through a process to try to remove as much doubt as humanly possible that these people are on the good side with God and our family members in heaven. And I don't think people pray to the saints. Here's the thing. What's the difference between... I Listen, I talked to my mom. She's in heaven. I saw her in heaven. I say I did. I can't prove it to anybody. I talked to my mom frequently. Not a lot, I mean, but I'll say, Hello, Mom, I love you. Or on my birthday, I'll say, Thank you for giving birth to me, Mom. Tell everybody I said hello. Am I praying to her? No. I talk to Jen. I talk to my father sometimes. You know, people I've known that have gone over. Tell my dog I said hello. I mean, I'm not praying to them. I've got their pictures around here, hanging up on the wall, a graven image of people I know are in heaven. It's not that the, we don't have too many photographs of the saints from the years gone by. We've got a few from more recent ones. But that's all they are. It's, it's just, I, I think that, and now, now granted, everybody's different. And they practice Catholicism different, different places of the world. So it's whatever you want to make it. Everybody's different. Definitely not worth arguing over. Now, I talked to somebody at length tonight, and uh, a Protestant whose views are very similar to mine, and they, they pretty much agree with everything I've said, except the saints. They, they believe in praying the rosary, and they're kind of a little iffy on the fence about the saints, about the praying to the saints. We're not really praying to them. You're talking to them. They're not worshiping the saints. It's not, they're not bowing down, worshiping, bowing down to graven images. That's the second commandment. Somebody pointed out, bowing down is, wor is a form of showing worship, making it an idol, which they were doing when the Ten Commandments were written. They were, the Israelites were doing that, that a golden calf or something like that, or B-A-A-L, Baal, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. They were, they were prone to do that. And um, so there was a commandment against that. And it's not the same with the saints. As far as, I've never been to a church where I thought they were worshiping the saints, ever. And of the many friends of mine, Christian friends that I've had throughout my life, at least half of them are Catholic, at least. Who include girlfriends too, Catholic. And their families, devout Catholics. They didn't worship the saints. And uh, they didn't, they prayed to Jesus Christ, that's just like I do, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They venerate Jesus' mother, Mary. And I agree with that. It's Jesus' mom. It was, bore him, raised him, watched him die at 33. It's Mary. I mean, you can't, you know... She was deemed worthy by God for this task. And the Protestants don't pay her even a tip of the hat. They don't. Not at all. Because the Protestant churches, most of them are really bent on being not Catholic. That they even ignore Mother Mary. And as for the saints, I, th I think that's also a loss. I, my involvement with the Catholic Church off and on I've always found the closer I got to the Catholic Church, you know, you're going to, if you look and look, you, you'll see that there's corruption. It is, it is not infallible. You know, there's, there are things, some gripes that I have problems with, the wealth, and uh, of course some priests have gotten in that shouldn't be in, wolves in sheep clothing that, you know, become instruments of the devil through their perversion. But that's nuts. Like I tell people, you got pedophiles and teachers. You got pedophiles that are police. You got pedophiles that are doctors. I served 20 years in the army. There are pedophiles in the military. They're everywhere. 
And, you know, the Catholic Church should hopefully take a, to weed these people out. I mean, it's especially bad when you're going to somebody wide open for help. And it it's, that's always been there. So I can't make apologies for that. But don't throw the whole church out for that. And people get tunnel vision. I'm a little emotional here. Because I really didn't want to offend anybody with this. I'm going to leave it up because, honestly, I went into it prayerfully and uh, I wouldn't take back a word of what I said. It is just my opinion. I'm not an expert. I'm not. I'm far from it. Far from it. And I did speak my mind. I told the truth. I had a couple of problems. A few small issues I had personally with the Catholic Church, but they're not issues that is going to make me turn away from it. But things that I give pause, I haven't worked through yet. And I go through them in video one, I mention them. I wasn't allowed to take communion as a child. I didn't like that. Sorry, I know they have their reasons, and I respected their reasons then and now, but I didn't like it. And I do believe I like to say my confession straight to God and I give reasons for that, two reasons. When Jesus gave up the ghost on the cross, the innermost curtain in the temple was rent, torn to, which means when Jesus died on the cross, that his death and blood opened a direct path because the curtain, the inner curtain, was in the temple, and, and there were no churches at that time, just temples, and Jesus went to them, and they called him rabbi. The innermost temple was a place only the high priest could go. There were two curtains, and curtain one separated the masses, and curtain two was a place only the high priest could go, the most holy place of the temple. I'm not an expert on it, but that's my understanding of it. And when Jesus was crucified, when he gave up the, the words he said, Father, into, my, into your hands I commit my spirit, and it is finished. And gave up the ghost. And the, the sun went dark for three hours, the earth shook, and the innermost curtain was torn in two. And that symbolizes that he opened a direct path for people like me, people like you, to have direct communication with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. We don't need the rabbi to go in there for us anymore. Or in this case, I say a priest. And, I, and that's why I pray directly to God the Father for forgiveness, that and the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, starts out, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We know who we're addressing, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And it goes on and on, and it says, Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. So, our Father who art in heaven, Forgive me of my sins. I ask God for forgiveness. And when I, I may get specific, or I may just be general, or I may get specific like confession. This is just my take on it. I really didn't want to cover things on this channel like politics, abortion, uh, gay rights, race relations, things that are, I don't care who you are. No two people really see these things exactly the same. Well, maybe two might, but most don't. And you can go to the church you've been going to for years, and there's going to be people in there that see things differently than you. And some people aren't very accepting of other people's views. If it's in the Bible in black and white, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say this, but gay marriage in a church should not happen. A gay priest in a church should not happen. I'm a very accepting people on that topic. Live and let live, but it is what it is. And uh, so, hope I don't get kicked off uh, YouTube for saying this, but it's written in the Bible. That's an abomination. You know, I, I'm not a uh, cream puff or just anything goes with me. But we're talking about the rosary 
And we're talking about praying to the saints for intercession. And I don't, you know, praying to the saints for intercession, that's something that came along in the early church, I think. Um, I'm not an authority on it. But I don't have a problem with it at all. And I don't believe anybody in the Catholic Church that I know of, maybe some other, like down in South America or something, no offense, or some of these places where they, they practice a different form of Catholicism than what you might see here or, you know, the Vatican, whatever. You know, France, there's a lot of Catholics there too. Um, I don't know, everybody's different. There's different uh, Protestant churches. There must be a thousand of them. I don't know, but, you know, they're just offshoots. I could start a church here in my home. And let's say it takes off and... Next thing I know, I've got 50 people attending it. I name it something else. The church of, you know, whatever I want to call it. You know, that's where catechism, catechism come in, to keep us in line. And I understand that. And I did read into the catechisms of the Catholic Church, and, and Protestant churches have them too. It's a good dogma to make sure that we all, as a group, are on the same track of the fundamental things. Now I'm going down the road to something else. But I did not want to upset or offend anybody because some people get upset over these things and they really shouldn't. Come on. What do you think we're talking about? Protestants and Catholics, we all have, we put our pants on one leg at a time. We all have problems. We're just people, you know? We all love Jesus Christ. Catholics and Protestants believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What did Jesus say you have to do to be saved? Believe that he is the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, Son of God, crucified, rose on the third day, sits at the right-hand side of God the Father, and that he is, you know, all forgiveness is through him. And that's that he's opened the way for us. Catholics believe that. Protestants believe that. We're all saved. We're all of the same family. And it breaks my heart to see people fighting, even killing each other over this stuff. Like when I went to that beautiful place, Mont Saint Michel, to read the history that the Huguenots were slaughtered there. I think some of them were. They were imprisoned there and tortured, some of them. That place has a mixed history. It's, you know, it's really old, like it was built in the 8th century. It's seen a lot of great things, it's seen some horrible things. We live on this fallen earth. This fallen earth. So, I would love, really love to see if I could do everything, anything to bring Catholics and Protestants together, like two arms of, of the church, with Jesus Christ at the head, doing the will of Christ together as we should be, and not in disagreement because somebody has hang-ups with the Vatican because they've heard conspiracies that there's all kinds of stuff in there. Prove it. They can't. It's locked up. Well, how can you tell me this? Yes, is what I told this person. You want me to throw away parts of my faith? You want me to condemn the Catholic Church because you believe a conspiracy theory you heard that you have no proof of whatsoever? Well, this person also believes the earth, the earth is flat. They're not going to watch this video. If they do, they'll probably laugh. It's fine. We're cool. We're cool. It's all, we're cool. I've said these things to your face plenty of times. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of people. Let's get along. But some Protestants are the most intolerant people. There are no such thing as ghosts. And they laugh at my ghost stories. They're all demons. And they question I had a, pre a preacher tell me, a Protestant preacher question, because I was telling him about some of my spiritual experiences and how I went underwent a demonic attack. And he said, well, how can you, if you're of God, how can you undergo a demonic attack? You know, I'm supposed to be like bulletproof, according to him. But little did he know that a lot of, well, Catholic saints had, were attacked by demonic attacks. They saw ghosts, Padre Pio, Pio, and many others. So he doesn't know. It was a dumb, demonic attack. It didn't win. 
Tried to, tried to possess me. It couldn't possess me. Both times. You can't come into this house. The Lord built, the Lord lives in. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom I accept as my Savior, was all it took to make it go bye-bye. But you try to tell this to some Protestants, and they're, they're going to look at me like I'm a nut. I'm not a Christian. They, they were gonna, they'll condemn me for this. Some will. Some won't. So let's be careful not to lump even the Protestants all in one bag. There are a lot of Protestants, like myself, that have a lot of experiences and believe everything I have to say because they have their own. So Protestant Catholic people, man, we're just people, all of us, men and women. Live and die, grow old, suffer, struggle, accept Jesus as our Savior, hope for a resurrection, that we will be with him, that his resurrection, that, you know, we have our faith in God as we get to this life. I like the Catholic Church. I think it's extremely family-centric. I think our society would be a much better, stronger society if the Catholic Church was more part of it, quite frankly. And I would go to a Catholic Mass uh, more often. Quite frankly, part of me is just too lazy to take the R course. I'll be honest with you. I don't feel like going through all that at my age. I, I, I'm just being honest with you. Part of it's just laziness. And part of it's some things I haven't ironed out yet within me. And part of it's me thinking it's not necessary. I don't need to. I'm, you know, I know what, what I've got to do to be saved. And uh, so I'm kind of a freelancer. But then again, I also understand that it's important that people are members of their church because empty Catholic churches... And empty Protestant churches are all over the place. And I seen one beautiful old church up in Auburn that became a restaurant and a bar. Another one became a home, uh, somebody's residence. <sighs> These churches started emptying out, coincides with when the internet, TV, the internet came in. And, uh, Nobody really feels the need that they don't feel the need to go to a church anymore. And that's sad. I, I go to a church, but I don't go every Sunday. But my Protestant friends, my Catholic friends, I hope I didn't offend anybody or put anybody off. And I hope nobody's comments on my videos that haven't really been watched much. Quite frankly, I'm glad they weren't. I haven't put anybody off because it occurred to me I was really kind of shocked. It occurred to me that I should have realized that such a hot button topic like me as a Protestant, what do I think of Catholics praying to the saints for intercession, praying the rosary. And come lo and behold, I'm quite open minded to it and I accept it. Do I practice it? No, not completely, no. But I completely accept it. And someday I might. I'm open-minded. I, I would like to know more about it. Uh, just studying this, the rosary, led me to believe that it's a very powerful tool that I've missed out on. I, I wish I would have prayed the rosary with my family every Sunday. And my mother, a devout Christian, whom I saw in heaven, now, there's a problem I have with some Catholics, and I looked into it. But I've heard some Catholics say, unless you're part of the Catholic Church, you're not going to have it. That's not part of the, the Catholic Church's. I looked into it. The Catholic Church does not say that. I looked into it. Their dogma. The Catholic Church says, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Savior to go to heaven. That's it. You don't have to be a member of the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church says that. But I've heard a few Catholics say differently. They're just people. Like I've heard some Protestant, you know, they, they say things that I against Catholics that I think is there's no truth to it whatsoever. So let's just understand we're dealing with people here. So and we should be more informed. I got informed. Is it true? Because I saw my mom in heaven, and I know she's there. I saw her in her glorified state. And my friend Brian, I saw him there. 
and Jen, I saw her, I think, en route there, doing okay. Um, but it's not, what they said wasn't true. But I had to look it up. I didn't just believe them on face value. Uh, you know, the Catholic would say that. And they sounded like they knew what they were talking about, but they didn't. Because I looked into it. They were wrong. And I would tell my Protestant friends, my friends who say that the Catholics are bowing down to graven images with the saints, uh, I would invite you to look into that deeper from several sources, like I have. And I also have gone to Catholic Mass many times. I would invite you to do that as well before you start judging them. Seriously. And consider the history. The Catholic Church is the first church of Christ. You need to understand that. The Catholic Church is... God, let's see, do the math. 1,400... 1,500 years older than the first Protestant church, which sprung up from the Catholic church. So you just need to really, I, I don't want to be offensive here, but look into it. And I would tell you, my Protestant friends, I really would encourage you to go to a mass a couple times. Go to a few different churches. I've been to some mass Catholic churches it's just like the Protestant churches. I'd bounce around until I find a Catholic church I like. All you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for your sins, rose again, and sits at the right hand side of God, Father. All right? All the other things, before you put down Catholics or before Catholics put down Protestants, I've said a lot more than I planned on saying here. This is a heavy topic. You know, I jumped into this. I jumped into this with both feet. <laughs> both feet. So, I don't get what I get. So, <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your comments. I got a bit of a headache. Take care.